Welcome to Gearbox Labs. My name is Isabel and I'm here with Peter. Today we are going to use Tinkercad for the digital design of uh, uh, engineering prototypes. So the first thing here we are going to sign in. And then we are here in the main page of Tinkercad. We are going to use circuits and creating a new circuit. And the first thing, we are going to change the name of our project. We are going to start searching for the components and dragging them to the left. And the first one is the microcontroller. For this project, I'm going to put the breadboard on the top because the wires come out a little cleaner. Um, that's the strength of using a digital prototyping program like Tinkercad as you can move things around to make it real clean looking. get a breadboard and now what else do I need? So in here we are going to use uh, a potentiometer for controlling the LED okay. the an LED okay. and of course the resistor So we are going to change the values of the three. The first one is going to be potentiometer. We need a 10K potentiometer, kilo ohms. Kilo ohms. And uh, uh, the resistor has to be 220. Ohms. Ohms. The LED can be that color. You can change it either way by clicking on it. So the next thing is going to be placing the components on the breadboard. And we are going to start with the LED. Okay. So checking the connections. If we have cathode anode there, cathode is going to be the ground. And we already know for this connection, we need a resistor. And this one goes between the cathode and the, the ground. Okay. The next one is going to be the connection of our anode LED. And this one goes to the number, uh, we're going to place it on number 11. Changing the uh, cable to red, so we will match this one with the color of the LED. And the next one is going to be the potentiometer. So we are going to place the potentiometer next to the LED. And uh, this is going to be new. The potentiometers, they have three pins. And uh, we need to click on every pin to see the connection, to see the, um, where, where are they going to be connected. In, uh, in this case, we have two terminals, one at the left, one at the right, meaning those are grounds and 5 volts. In case of the potentiometers, it doesn't, it doesn't mean if we connect terminal 1 in ground or 5 volts. I mean, they, they, they can be in either. All right, so um, this potentiometer has three pins. We are going to start connecting the left one or terminal one, and this one goes to five volts. So we are going to connect directly to five volts of the microcontroller since it's the only five volts I'm going to use, and I'm changing this one to red. The second pin is going to be the signal, and this signal goes to the microcontroller. I'm going to use the analog side of the microcontroller number five. Okay. The last one is going to be our ground. So that way we have a loop in our circuit. So changing this one to blue and uh, basically we have our wiring. The next thing is going to be testing the code the, and the microcontroller. So 
So we have uh, a ground that is needed for our breadboard. Since we have two connections there, so we are going to draw a cable from the ground breadboard to the microcontroller, so that way we have connection. The next thing is going to be the testing of the microcontroller. So we are going to run the simulation, and then we are going to see if our LEDs are blinking. Moving a little bit the microcontroller, so we can see the on LED. Looks good, no short circuits. Now what? The next thing is going to be going to the code, to the text. We will continue. And we are going to erase the, uh, the code there. And in this case, we are going to start typing our code, which has uh, three integers today. So one for uh, the LED. Another one for the potentiometer. And then we have an integer for the value. And we are going to place this one as zero. As soon as we declare the uh, integers, the next thing is going to be the void setup. We need a pin mode, which is going to be for an LED as an output. Now yeah. I notice here that we used all capital letters for the variable called LED. Has to be in pin mode capital as well. It has to be the same. So I couldn't use capital here and lowercase here, no. as long as they're the same, mm -hmm. we're okay. And it, it's actually okay to use all capital letters. Our, our other projects have had lowercase so far for variables, but we're showing, again, a little bit different way of, of, of naming a variable here. So that's cool. Okay. So we are going to close void setup with a bracket. And then we will continue with the void loop. We need to uh, write an integer for the value. And we have a connection in, in the analog read. And this one is the input. This is the connection to the potentiometer. Then we have an analog write. for the LED and value divided by 4. Wow, we're doing some math. Mathematics here. So, mm -hmm. With a semicolon closing with a bracket. Now why are we dividing by 4? Well, in here we have uh, the input as yes, 1023 the PWM, and this one has a resolution of 256. So we have to divide this one. Ah, so the potentiometer can go 0 to 1023. Yes. But the LED really can only go 0 to 256, so we have to kind of scale down. Right, to divide that, yes. Ah, That's why. Interesting. That's why. Very interesting. We are going to see this kind of pattern in the uh, next project, which is the RGBs, in which we use actually... Uh, the setting of colors. Uh, 256 is an important number yes, in it is. digital com computational sciences and that right. as well. Ah, very interesting. Okay, so what's next? So the next is going to be starting the simulation. All right. And then in here, we are going to use the mouse clicking on the potentiometer and rotate 
to see uh, what happens. So we oh. are controlling uh, the LED, the brightness of our LED. So the right, by turning to the right, it is off, and okay. to the left is on. Ah, oh, interesting. This is just like the dimmer switch in a wall. It's an example of a dimmer switch. Oh, okay, you can use that in the room. But we got a chance to, to code it. Very cool. What else can you do with this project? What kind of challenges would you... Well, in here, we can add some other LEDs, more LEDs. We can play as well with uh, um, delays. We can add delays as well. Could you substitute the LED with a piezo, a buzzer, and, 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 and work maybe the tone or maybe um, the delay? It's possible, yeah. But now we have an ability to get an input from a potentiometer. Yeah, there are some other components that can be added to the project. This is just one example. There are piezos, there are uh, even servos that can be. What I notice here is that we're doing an analog write to a digital pin. And that surprises me. Can you tell me a little bit about why we why we can get away with that here. In the digital side of the microcontroller, we have actually analog connections too. There, what is the difference between the digital and the analog? Uh, the analog, they have a tilde next to the number. So the number 11 has a tilde there. So this one can act as an analog connection. Whereas 12 really can't. No, they cannot. So the only ones that can do the analog uh, is the 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11. Okay, very interesting. Gives you some extra capability as well. Yeah, there are going to be uh, projects with many analog connections, especially for sensors. So that, that area of the digital can be used. Well, thank you very much for watching this particular tutorial on making a dimmer switch with your Tinkercad account. Um, next we're going to be working on uh, an RGB LED. So we look forward to seeing you in that next tutorial from Peter and Isabel. Thank you much.